It's finally here, the all new 2020 Land Rover Defender. After months of teasing this thing, Land Rover finally pulled the wraps off it Tuesday morning at the Frankfurt Auto Show. And we'll just look. Now the new one comes in two different sizes, the Defender 110, which is a four-door, and the Defender 90, which is a two-door. These are the same sizes and proportions as the original Land Rover Defender. However, you're not going to mistake the new one for the old one, because it looks very different. Still recognizably a Land Rover, but the new one has sort of a uh, exaggerated concept car quality to it, so it's definitely not going to be the sort of thing where you have to worry about people thinking you bought an old car. This is very recognizably a modern-day Land Rover. There are plenty of ways to make it your own, depending on how much you like the way that it looks in some of these videos. They actually are offering four different appearance and sort of option packages to it, depending on how you want to configure yours out. As ranging from like the urban pack, which is made for more for city dwellers, to the adventure pack for people who live active outdoor lifestyles. Inside, things look a little more traditional, like you'd expect from a Land Rover. Though the powder-coated magnesium cross-car beam that serves as both a structural element and a design one seems like the sort of thing that's going to get a lot of attention. Another interesting fact about the interior is that the front row can actually come as a three-person bench. So if you really want to cram as many people in there as you can, the Defender 90 actually comes standard with this. So even though it's a tiny little car, in terms of its sort of wheelbase and length, you can actually get six people in it. It may look a little bit simple on the inside, but it is very high tech. Everyone comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and there's also a new infotainment system, which is coming to Land Rover for the first time here. Uh, it also, they're getting uh, over-the-air updates, like a smartphone or a Tesla or something like that, in order to sort of like update your car while on the go without having to take it into the dealership. So not only is it a Land Rover, it's a Defender, so it has to be capable off-road. Based on the spec sheet, it seems like this one is going to do all that we need it to do and more. It's the stiffest Land Rover ever made, and of course it comes with standard full-time four-wheel drive and low range, as you'd expect. It's a Land Rover, that's what they do. It also comes with obviously options like locking center and rear differentials. You can get it with a snorkel if you want in there. There's adaptive suspensions in play. You can spec it out really however you want to make it as badass off-road as you think you need. The suspension jacked up all the way. It offers a phenomenal 11.5 inches of ground clearance. And it can actually scramble up a 38 degree slope and then down a 40 degree one, which if you've ever tried walking down a ski slope, you would imagine is kind of insane. So there'll be two engines available here in America. There is a turbocharged inline four that makes 296 horsepower and a hybridized turbocharged inline six, which makes 395 horses. Either way though, again, four-wheel drive is standard, gonna be connected to an eight-speed automatic either way, no manual transmissions. Sorry guys, womp womp. Pricing starts at $49,900 for the base model, climbing all the way up to $80,900 for the top tier X version. The 110 model will go on sale first. It's gonna hit showrooms in the spring of 2020. The uh, Defender 90 will go on sale a little bit after that. So Land Rover has really done a great job of mastering not just the hardware of off-roading nowadays, but also the software of it. So the way that they integrate the sort of mechanicals and the electronics and stuff like that allows them to basically, it makes it idiot-proof. Like they always take you out, of, when you go off-roading in a Land Rover nowadays, as long as you're not a buffoon and you're not just being recklessly stupid, it's very hard to get too deep into trouble that the car can't save you. So I'm really excited to see with all the new off-road hardware and software that they're integrating here with their terrain response system and the heavy-duty four-wheel drive, all this stuff like that. Really curious to see how well this thing performs off-road.